Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. In Sri Lanka, at least 160 people killed and over 400 injured in a series of bomb blasts in churches and hotels. India closely watching the situation, says External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj. Campaigning for the third phase of Lok Sabha elections ends this evening. 15 Maoists surrender in Chhattisgarh. Easter been celebrated across the globe with religious fervor and gaiety. In IPL cricket, Sunrisers Hyderabad take on Kolkata Knight Riders, while Royal Challengers Bangalore face Chennai Super Kings today. And in football, Punjab lock horns with services in a summit clash of Santosh Trophy in Ludhiana this afternoon. In Sri Lanka, at least 160 people have been killed and over 400 injured in a series of bomb explosions targeting five-star hotels in the capital Colombo and churches across the country. At least nine foreign nationals have been killed and over 12 injured in the explosions at Shangri-La, Kingsbury and Cinnamon Grand Hotels in Colombo, a favorite for foreign nationals. The attacks happened around 9 a.m. when the churches were organizing Easter Mass while services were organized at the hotels. Police has rushed to all affected areas and sealed off the churches and hotels. Public has been advised to keep away from the incident sites and not to overcrowd hospitals. Our correspondent reports that Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe held an emergency meeting to review the situation. The attack locations included three top five-star hotels in capital Colombo within a radius of one kilometer. Three other churches were attacked in Colombo, Negombo and Eastern Bartikolova during Eastern Mass service and maximum casualty numbers are from these locations. President Maitri Pala Sirisena expressed shock and requested public to remain calm. Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singhe held an emergency cabinet meeting to review the situation while security alert has been sounded for whole of the country. Many of the injured are in serious condition and casualties may rise. Santosh Kumar for AIR News from Colombo. No organization has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. This is the biggest such attack in Sri Lanka since the war against LTTE ended in 2009. External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj has said that she is in constant touch with the Indian High Commission and Colombo. In a tweet, Mrs. Swaraj said, New Delhi is keeping a close watch on the situation following multiple explosions in Sri Lanka. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkai Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have condemned the horrific attacks in Sri Lanka. The President said such senseless violence aimed at innocent people has no place in civilized society. President said India stands in complete solidarity with Sri Lanka. In a tweet, the Vice President expressed condolences to the members of the bereaved families and wished a speedy recovery to the injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said there is no place for such barbarism in a region. Mr. Modi said his thoughts are with the bereaved families and prayers with the injured. Campaigning for the third phase of Lok Sabha elections ends this evening. 116 constituencies spread over 13 states and two Indian territories will go to polls in this phase on Tuesday. Top leaders of various political parties are making last-ditch efforts to woo the voters. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that BJP is committed for not only Samruddha Bharat, but also Sashakt Bharat. He criticized Congress Party for its misrule and compromising national security. Addressing an election rally at Patan in North Gujarat, Mr. Modi said, India has become the sixth largest economy and his government is targeting to make it top three nations in the world. The Prime Minister said his government is completely committed to the welfare of poor, backwards and farmers. Our correspondent reports that leaders of main political parties engaged in hectic poll campaign in the state before campaigning comes to an end this evening. Senior BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and party president Amit Shah led the last leg of party's poll campaign in the state. Prime Minister Modi addressed election rally at Patan in North Gujarat while party's Gandhinagar candidate Amit Shah is holding a road show in Sanand and organizing group meetings in his constituency. At the other end, senior Congress leader Ahmed Patel is campaigning in Saurashtra while party's candidates Dr. Tusar Choudhury, Bharat Singh Solanki and CJ Chawda have organized road show and bike rallies in their Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address two rallies at Chittorgarh and Barmer in Rajasthan today. 
Congress President Rahul Gandhi is also scheduled to address a public meeting at Baneshwar Dham and Banswara district of the state on Tuesday. Our correspondent has the details. In the fourth phase, elections are going to be held in 13 seats of the state, out of which nine seats belong to Mewar and Marwar region. In the Lok Sabha elections held in 2014, the BJP had won all the nine seats in both regions. The BJP is trying to maintain its hold of these regions. In Jodhpur, BJP has nominated Union Minister of State for Agriculture, Gajendra Singh, as its candidate, where from the Congress, Chief Minister So Gehlo's son, Vaibhav, is in the election fray. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. In Maharashtra, 14 constituencies will go to polls in the third phase. A correspondent reports all candidates are seen giving emphasis on road show and door-to-door -door campaigning. Candidates and star campaigners are taking full advantage of weekend holidays. Saturday witnessed huge rallies of BJP leaders Nitin Gadkari and Devendra Fadnavis. Shivasena Chief Uddhav Thakare was also seen in action in Kokan region. Veterans like Sharad Pawar, Prithvira Chavan and Ashok Chavan were holding forth for Congress and NCP. Local party leaders like Raju Shetty, who is with Congress NCP, and Mahadev Jankar, who is with BJP Shivasena, were also seen holding rallies. Prakash Ambedkar was handling campaign of Vanchit Bhaujan Aghadi. Nitin Kekar for AIR News, Pune. In Kerala, a total of 227 candidates are in the fray in 20 constituencies of the state. Road shows by candidates have been held in most of the Lok Sabha seats. A report. In Tiruvananthapuram constituency, senior Congress leaders A.K. Antony, Umman Chandi and Ramesh Chenitala are conducting road shows for UDF candidate Shashi Tharoor. The road show by LDF candidate Siddhi Bhakaran and India candidate Kumanam Rajasekharan are also progressing in various centres. Union Minister and BJP leader Nirmala Sitaraman will address public meetings in Kodikod and Kasar God for NDA candidates today. Congress General Secretary Penga Gandhi Vadra will continue her campaign for Congress Chief Rahul Gandhi in Vayanad. Kerala Chief Minister and CPIM leader Pinarai Vijayan is also campaigning in Kandol and CPIM General Secretary Sitaram Yachuri will campaign in Kasar God today. Shamila, AR News, Tiruvannandapuram. In Assam, four constituencies, Kohati, Barpeta, Dhubri and Kokrajar will go to polls in this phase with 54 candidates in the fray. Senior BJP lead and Chief Minister Sarvanan Sonowal, Minister Simanta Bishwa Sharma and Ranjit Datta are holding rallies and road shows to woo the voters. Congress leaders and former Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi, AIUDF President Badruddin Ajmal and BPF leader Pramila Rani Brahma are also holding rallies and road shows. In Tripura, eight polling officials from Tripura West constituency have been arrested by the police. These polling and presiding officers have been charged with deliberately suppressing incidents of booth capturing during the first phase of polling. Returning officer Dr. Sandeep Mahatme has asked the assistant returning officers of different subdivisions to take legal action against identified polling officers and micro-observers following the incident. Meanwhile, elaborate arrangements are in place for Tuesday's elections in the state. Aam Aadmi Party today declared candidates for three Lok Sabha seats in Haryana. Briefing reporters in New Delhi, party leader Gopal Rai said, Naveen Jai Hind will be the candidate for Faridabad, Prithivi Raj from Ambala and Krishan Kumar Agarwal from Karnal. Aam Aadmi Party, AAP and Jan Naik Janata Party, JJP, had forged an alliance in Haryana for the Lok Sabha elections. AAP will contest three seats and JJP in seven seats. Senior Congress leader and former Union Minister P. Chidambaram has said his party will restructure his National Security Advisory Board. He was talking to reporters in New Delhi after releasing a report on issues related to national security drafted by retired Lieutenant General D.S. Hudda. Mr. Chidambaram said his party will incorporate some of the suggestions made in the report after thorough discussions and deliberations. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. अब धोखा नहीं खाएंगे कांग्रेस सरकार लाएंगे सरकार वैसी आए जो सबको देने जाए लाए हो उन्नति हो लाए हो प्रगति हो लाए किसान पाए हर नौजवान पाए रोजगार लाए मिटा दे नफरत लाए ये प्यार लाए अन्याय मिटाने के लिए उठा मैं एक तूफान हूँ मैं ही तो हिंदुस्तान हूँ अब धोखा नहीं मैं ही तो हिंदुस्तान हूँ in Chhattisgarh, 15 Maoists, including six female rebels, surrendered in Bijapur district of Bastar Division today. 
They have surrendered before the Superintendent of Police, Govardhan Thakur. One of the surrendered Maoists carried a reward of 1 lakh rupees on his head. These Maoists also handed over three rifles to the police. Police officials said that the surrendered Maoists will be provided necessary assistance as per the rehabilitation policy of the state government. Easter has been celebrated across the globe today. It signifies the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his crucifixion and death at Calvary on Good Friday. The resurrection was announced at the stroke of midnight at churches and special prayers were held on the occasion. Special mass have been held at churches in the country and abroad to mark the day. Our correspondent has filed a report on the celebration of Easter in Nagaland. Marking the Easter celebration, thousands of people, both young and old, gathered at World War II Cemetery in Kohima to attend the sunrise service early this morning. Victory Choir and sermons mark the day in churches, irrespective of denominations across Nagaland. Believers offered special prayer services, participated in the Lord's Supper and Thanksgiving Feast. Asunyo AIR News, Kohima. President, Vice President and Prime Minister greeted the people on Easter. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted all civil servants who are serving the nation with utmost diligence on Civil Services Day today. In a tweet, he said the hard work enhances the country's development trajectory. In this context, Prime Minister recalled the contributions of Sardar Patel for his outstanding role in making a strong administrative framework for the country that empowers millions of lives through policy interventions and methodical implementation. In Indonesia, Mount Ag Agang, Volcano and Bali Resort Island erupted today, spewed a column of ashes by up to two kilometers onto the sky. Spokesman of the National Disaster Management Agency, Sutopo Purvo Nugroho, said the eruption occurred at 8.23 a.m. local time when belching of ash and smoke heading southwest of the crater. He said thousands of masks have been distributed to the communities amid the fears of the ashes impacting human respiratory. Sutopo said no report of casualties so far been reached after the eruption. Mount Agung is situated in Karangasem district. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said killing of Egyptian peacekeeper in Mali may constitute war crimes and demand swift action. The UN chief issued a statement giving details of the deadly bombing which took place against a convoy of vehicles in central Mali close to the border with Burkina Faso belonging to the UN mission MINUSMA an improvised roadside mine which exploded, hitting a UN peacekeeping convoy in Mali, killing one blue helmet from Egypt and wounding four others. The Secretary General expressed his deepest condolences to the families of the victims and to the government of Egypt. And now news from the world of sports. In IPL cricket, today Sunrisers Hyderabad will take on Kolkata Knight Riders at 4pm at Hyderabad, while Royal Challengers Bangalore will host Chennai Super Kings at 8 in the evening. On to football, Punjab will lock horns with services in the summit clash of the Santosh Trophy in Ludhiana today. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary on the match from 3.25pm onwards. The commentary can be heard on the FM Rainbow Network and National Hookup. In the Asian Boxing Championships at Bangkok, Shiv Thapa inched closer to adding a red record fourth medal by entering the 60 kilogram pre quarterfinals while six other Indians advanced to the last eight stage yesterday and the Asian Athletics Championships begin in Doha today the first day will decide eight gold medals sprint sensation Hima Das will be seen in action in the women's 400 meters event Sabi Hassan Khan AIR News Maldivian president Ibrahim Mohamed Soli is flying to Bangalore today to attend an IPL match on the invitation of the BCCI and now, before we close the headlines once again, in Sri Lanka, at least 160 people killed and over 400 injured in a series of bomb blasts in churches and hotels. India closely watching the situation, says External Affairs Minister Shushma Suraj. Campaigning for the third phase of Lok Sabha elections ends this evening. 15 Maoists surrender in Chhattisgarh. Easter been celebrated across the globe with religious fervor and gaiety. In IPL cricket, Sunrisers Hyderabad take on Kolkata Knight Riders, while Royal Challengers Bangalore face Chennai Super Kings today. And in football, Punjab lock horns with services in summit clash of the Santosh Trophy in Ludhiana this afternoon. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the midday news.